Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Mm. Uh, number 592 in this book. What's the title? Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole, whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want Thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the skies and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow, whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing, I see thy blood flow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow, whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, thou seest, I patiently wait. 
Come now and within me a new heart create. To those who have sought thee, thou never saidst no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. All right, thank you for singing. Yes, I remember um, mom giving me a bath and she would sing us that song while we were getting all clean. Uh, this is Brother Thomas. Uh, he's volunteered here a couple times now. Was it January? You were here January? Last? Yes. I was here last in January. January, okay, yes. I'm trying to remember the, the dates of it. So, uh, Brother Thomas, do you remember this piece of wood when you were here in uh, January? Mm, no. Uh, th this comes from an elm tree and I'd cut it down and pulled the log out of it to the sawmill and then the, the part that was too small for lumber, I told Thomas to go ahead and cut it up. So this is part of the, one of the limbs that is cut into firewood length and uh, it's been cut since uh, January, since you cut it. And the interesting thing is, is that there's enough sap in this that even though it's been cut since January and there's no sap been flowing to it from the roots, there was enough sap in here that uh, it's starting to sprout out. You can see the new growth coming out. How long do you think that this can grow without any roots. Till the sun hits it and it dries out. Yes. So it'll dry out and eventually this will die because it's not connected to the roots at all. What does this tell us about the Christian life? You can grow and look like a good Christian for a certain amount of time without being rooted and grounded in love, in the love of Christ. You can go on for a while and look good, but eventually, if you're not connected to Yeshua, to Jesus, the source of life and strength, eventually you'll just wither away. You'll die. All those who are not connected to Christ, they may grow for a time, but they will wither away and die. This makes me think of a passage in the book of John John chapter 15. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth or pruneth it, that it br may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, Jesus said. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Is this piece of wood abiding in the trunk? Is it connected with the trunk? No. So it can only grow for a short time and then it will die. Brother Thomas, as you walk with Christ, you need to be connected to him. 
How do we stay connected to Jesus? Through His Word. Yes, through His Word, through prayer. So we take time to be in His Word. We take time to pray, to, to tell our Father what we're thankful for, to ask Him for what we need. Through prayer, through the study of His Word, that is how we stay connected to our Heavenly Father. That is how we stay connected to Jesus Christ. And it is as we stay connected that we will grow and grow and grow. <clears throat> like that song says, Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow grow, grow, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Yes. Brother Thomas, uh, tell us your testimony, whatever the Lord would lay on your heart to, to share. Sure. Um, so, I'm a newer Christian, and um, it's probably been about three years where I've been studying the Word and getting into community. Um, I come from from a, a life of loneliness, uh, addiction, and uh, just really trying to do life on my own, by myself, always by myself, and not really trusting the Lord or other other people. Mm. Um, what was the turning point that brought you to come to know Jesus, to turn towards Him? So the turning point was um, a tornado that ripped through my community. Mm. And uh, through all that disaster and chaos, it brought me out into the community it, it gave me a willingness to help, but that was just a stepping stone. That was just the first step. Um, I ended up going, cleaning, cleaning up the tornado damage every week for almost for almost a year and a half, every Saturday, and it connected me with people, people that I really before did not want to be connected to. I just did not want a community. I thought I can live life on my own and do things on my own and. Um, and that's not the case. Um, but through the community, through the, uh, you know, the willingness to help others, um, others helped me to bring me closer to God, to, um, bring me to a place where I met my future wife and, uh, and there's no more loneliness in my heart. Um, I'm only filled with joy right now, which I don't have to, I don't have to drown that out with anything or fill it with anything synthetic or manufactured. Mm -hmm. It's a true and natural joy that I get mm -hmm. from the Lord. And I know I was one way and now I'm different. Mm. Amen. Amen. It's a transformation. Amen. Amen. So you, you don't need alcohol anymore. No. Nope. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> you have something far better. Something that lasts a lot longer, and um, does not ha does not have a hangover. <laughs> I can wake up in the morning. I can listen to the birds without any annoyance. Right now, like I, I listen to the birds, and uh, I just get that pure joy um, when I wake up in the mornings, fresh, ready to go, sober-minded and uh, just ready to do life any way it comes. Amen, amen, wow. Yes, what would you say to those people who have not made their decision to follow Jesus all the way in baptism? Well, like, uh, like, like this log, it's, it's temporary. If you're just kinda putting your foot in the water and just, just testing out the waters, um, you know, it's temporary. I think you need to go all the way. I think you need to be all in. Mm. Um, you can't really straddle the fence and 
try things out and poke around. You're either in or you're not. Just just go all in. That's what I would say. Just go all in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. Nobody has ever regretted the decision no. to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. That is a decision that you will never, ever, ever regret. Amen. This is John chapter 14 and verse 27. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <clears throat> the peace that the world gives is the empty praise, the empty compliments. And that kind of peace lasts for a short time and then there's unrest, there's uneasiness, there's fear for the future. But when you have the peace that Jesus gives, you have peace right now in this troublous times we live in, and you know that your, you know that your past has been forgiven, and you know that your future is secure because of the forgiveness that flows from that sacrifice that the Father made in giving His Son 2,000 years ago. Because of that sacrifice, because of that gift in the Father giving His Son, we have forgiveness, we have hope, we have peace. And nothing that the world has, nothing that the world promises can compare at all to what Jesus gives. Amen. For what the Father has given through His Son, nothing can compare. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is made unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So our Father has called you, Thomas. You're listening, you're responding to that call. And when you were far away, he was drawing you close to himself. So now you have chosen to be baptized. The step that comes before baptism is repentance. Have you repented of sin? Yes. Yes. Yes, repentance is where you're turning away from sin and turning towards the path of righteousness. Repentance is turning away from sin and whatever Satan has to offer you and turning towards Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Baptism is a symbol. <clears throat> Baptism doesn't save you, but it's a symbol that the old man, the old man of sin, the old Thomas, dies in a watery grave and the new Thomas comes out, a new man in Christ. Yes. <laughs> so this... This experience has already, this reality has already taken place. But we go into the waters of baptism as a symbol. And it's a public commitment. So now Thomas is publicly declaring that he is dead to the old man of sin. And now he's a new man in Christ. I'm all in. Yes, amen. <laughs> yes, 100%. So since Thomas has made this choice, hold him accountable. When a man decides, I'm going to be a police officer, and he wears the uniform, we expect him to be a police officer. When a man decides to be a firefighter, and he has his badge, and he has his outfit, and he has his gear, we expect him to do the job of a firefighter. He signed up for it. So Thomas has signed up to be a Christian. Expect him to be one. Pray for Thomas. Encourage Thomas. There's times where we may get discouraged in this journey with Jesus. 
encourage your brother Thomas. Challenge your brother Thomas to be all that he can be in the power of Jesus Christ, in the power of Yeshua. All right, I don't see anything hindering us from getting in. April 20 is a little bit cool. <laughs> <laughs> over this way. You can just hold your nose and we'll go over backwards. Okay. Brother Thomas, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The work behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. No turning back.